So now let's get to the actual practical exercises. So the first thing which we want to verify with the modules we have is that I have not lied to you when I told you about the free space losses. So we want to uh, play through the loss due to propagation in free space. And we can do this with various frequencies and with uh, various uh, distances. And uh, we are going to be manipulating essentially the free space part of the, of the whole system here. And we're going to be looking at results. So one thing to start with is to look around the distance dependence. So you recall the, the simple formula that free space losses will be in decibels will be proportional to logarithm of the distance. It's even written here on the interface. So we can start, let's say, which uh, UHF frequency. So we can start with, uh, let's say, 430 megahertz. And at this frequency, which is uh, the lowest here allowed, UHF, we can fix the modulation. I'm going to fix, for example, 2400 baud rate with 600 uh, frequency deviation. And uh, I'm going to leave all of the other parameters by default, by their default of the uh, antenna power, the gain, and so on, the, the transmitter power, the antenna gain, and so on. And what I am going to vary is only the free space losses. So you see, for example, I can start changing the altitude now, and I can see how this will relate to my communication. So one, one thing to start with is maybe we can go at 100 kilometers of altitude and we can run the, the whole transmission and I'm going to start sending out packets. Of course, I have to have calculated the free space path loss first and you can do this yourself and you can include it here in decibels. And once you have the right answer and you start transmitting, you can start changing the distance and record each new receiver power you have. Now obviously if we change from 100 to 150 kilometers and if we run the whole thing again after having calculated the proper uh, number of the free space path losses in decibels uh, of course the power, the final power received we have is going to be lower than the previous one with exactly the same number of difference as uh, the difference in losses. So if we have 5 decibels more loss, we're going to have 5 decibel less of the receiver power. And what you can do here is you can get this and you can play around and do from an altitude of 100 kilometers and maybe 150 and 200 and so on. So I'm just going to skip writing all of these values here and I'm just going to show you uh, basically a table of values which, are, uh, which, which can be found empirically by playing with the simulation. And you can see that the plot, if you use a plot in uh, let's say in a decibel as a function of uh, the distance in, uh, in kilometers, you're going to have this uh, roughly logarithmic plot, which we expect because we know that the formula which Freeze uh, gave us is essentially uh, that uh, free space path losses is proportional to 20 times logarithm base 10 of the distance. So once you have this, you can actually verify this formula and you can see that with an actual RF module, which you have, which in a system in which you have a receiver and a transmitter and a part which simulates this distance, you can get exactly the same damping time, so the same loss. We can do the same thing, of course, for UHF S-band or X-band, but uh, so for example, if you go to S-band as a second, uh, let's say, part of this exercise, Maybe you, let's put it to 2.1 gigahertz, so 2,100 megahertz, first field. And we can start playing around with the altitude again. And you can see that at the same altitude with S-band, you're going to have a different dampening. And the whole coefficient, so the whole rate of change is going to be roughly the same, because again, it depends on 20 times logarithm base 10 of distance but since we have additional factors included which depend on the frequency which is higher now we're going to have a total overall loss which is higher so the let's say the rate of change if you make the same plot for s-band so if we go for 2.1 gigahertz and start from 100 kilometers and move upwards to 150 200 uh, 250 and 300 so you can try to make the same plot and again you're going to have the same curve but it's going to be uh, let's say it's going to be higher. So the curve is going to look the same way, but it's going to be higher in absolute value because in S-band you have a higher uh, 
total loss. Now, another interesting thing which we can try and do, which is very intuitive, is to fix now the altitude. So I'm going to fix it to 500 kilometers. So my south line is fixed at 500 kilometers uh, somehow. And I'm going to start changing the frequency of the uh, receiver and transmitter. Of course, when I change the frequency of the receiver, I must change that of the uh, transmitter as well, otherwise I won't receive anything. So we have fixed now the distance, it's 500 kilometers exactly, but we can change the frequency of the receiver and transmitter. So I'm going to start with 8000, so this is 8 gigahertz, and if I start with this, I get the following value, so I press transmit when I fix everything, when I compute my free space path losses, which you see here, I can run the whole thing, and I'm getting, of course, uh, some packets. I see, of course, the, the power which is lost in decibels due to the uh, free space. And now I can do the same thing for 8100 or 8050, and I can do it in iterations of, let's say, 50, so uh, 8000, 8050, 8100, 8150, and so on. And I can get as high as 8400. And uh, again, if I do all of these scenarios one by one, I'm going to get, of course, different values for the free space path losses. I have to calculate it on each step. And you can even do it as a very simple table in Excel or something and uh, verify that the values which you get, of course, are the ones which you expect from the freeze formula and uh, doing the actual simulation for each one of those values. So doing one point on which you have the same parameters of the system, you only change the frequency. You can see when you plot uh, the final result that indeed the dependency is uh, logarithm base 10 of the frequency. So you can see again this logarithmic function. And of course, now if we start changing all of them, so if we start, start changing the distance and the frequency simultaneously, it will take us a lot longer, of course, because we have two parameters to change now. We can see that both of them are included in the proper way. Of course, the last term of the free space losses, uh, so these are the only two things on which they depend. Uh, 4 pi and the speed of light are constants, and so you can see that by varying these uh, parameters, we can uh, get the appropriate plots. Now, one thing which, again, I would like to emphasize here when computing is that the units which we use, it should be the same. So, the three uh, quantities which you have, distance, frequency, and speed of light, or alternatively distance or wavelength, they are in such a dimensionality that their uh, multiplication and division, the total thing, will be dimensionless. So in the free space losses formula, which we used in the theoretical part, we had distance times 4 pi divided by wavelength. Now, if the distance is in meters, the, the wavelength should also be meters. If the distance is in kilometers, like here, the wavelength should also be in kilometers. So these should be uh, of the same uh, measurement units, so we can form a dimensionless thing. And in the same sense, if in this formula which we're using now, it's the same formula because you remember that the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, if we are using uh, kilometers for the distance uh, and seconds, uh, let's say inverse seconds or hertz for the frequency, we should be using, of course, uh, kilometers per second for the speed of light. So this is something important. So now let's see one more scenario where the Doppler effect is to be taken into account. If we look at this, again, very standard configuration for UHF at 437 megahertz, there is no jamming and there is no Doppler effect yet. And if I play the simulation, we are going to get uh, basically all of the packets are received. So we have uh, zero PER. And uh, let's see what happens if we start moving. So if we get a relative velocity between our satellite and our ground station, so between our transmitter and receiver. Okay, so let's give it a velocity of about 4 kilometers per second. So 4 kilometers per second, you could very easily get uh, a relative velocity of that order, and if you do, you can expect frequency change in the order of 5.8 kilohertz. So I'm activating the Doppler effect, and I'm going to run the simulation again without doing any frequency compensation. And you can see that we are not getting any packets. So we have 100% of packet error rate. Now, if I do tick on frequency compensation, 
then the receiver is going to use its own compensation and you see that we start receiving the packets. So you see that uh, without this automatic frequency compensation of the receiver, we didn't get anything. And now again, our uh, packet error rate is zero because everything has is, is gone through. Now, additionally, you can also manually compensate for the frequency change. So if you want to untick this frequency compensation, and we can even go to a higher speed. So let's say we go to something around seven kilometers per second, which is relatively hard to get, but you can expect a frequency deviation on the order of 10.2 kilohertz. So we can go to as, uh, as high as seven kilometers per second, which is almost unrealistically high to have uh, all the time between you and the satellite, maybe for a very small part of the orbit. And at, that, at this stage, you have a very high frequency change, 10.2 uh, kilohertz. And even if you tick the frequency compensation of the receiver, when you start a transmission, you see that it can no longer compensate. So the inbuilt frequency compensation extends only to about five or six kilohertz. And if you go higher than that, it can no longer compensate by itself. So you will have to include this compensation manually. And if I include 10.2 kilohertz, as manual compensation and if I run again the simulation you see that we start receiving so I am manually compensating in the receiver end uh, this change in frequency and now again our packet error rate goes to uh, to zero because we have everything going through but again if I even if I do the inbuilt frequency compensation for such a high uh, change of frequency more than five or six kilohertz uh, it will not work. So I have to have the, uh, this manual compensation, which of course I have to calculate. So one more thing to note is again that this uh, velocity, it means velocity parallel to you, but it, it also takes into account the sign. So if it's a positive velocity, it means that the satellite is coming towards you and this is only the parallel projection. So if the satellite moves exactly transverse to you, you will have no Doppler shift. This is just the parallel projection. And if you put a minus sign here, it would mean that the satellite is receding from you. So a minus 7.5 means that it's moving away from you in a parallel way. And so the, the right frequency deviation will no longer be 10.9, it would be minus 10.9, because you would not be adding the frequency, but removing it. So if you have a positive sign in the velocity, you have blue shift, and if you have a negative sign, you have a red shift. And you can play around with this frequency deviation, and you can check how, of course, both the inbuilt function for compensation and your manual compensation, also based on your uh, relative velocity, can be used to really track the satellite. Of course, in reality, whenever the satellite is passing, you have the velocity changing all the time because the relative projection, which you have, is changing from, uh, for example, it's moving almost parallel when it's near the horizon, and then it's moving almost transversely when it's right above you. So you may have zero Doppler effect when the satellite is exactly above your head, but uh, you may have a very high Doppler effect when it's uh, just approaching from the horizon.